Engineers and welcome back we're here with another Rome 2 siege battle for you today and as you can see we have a lot of Romans landing on the wall straight away and we have a lot of Romans in today's battle we have six Roman armies from various different uh, periods of the Empire we have three Imperator Augustus armies we have Octavian's Rome we have Pompey's Rome and we have Antony's Rome a weird unholy alliance of the three like rivals of the time um, Facing off against each other. I mean, even though it's not Pompey's Rome, really, it's uh, like Pompey's son, really. It's not the great Pompus, Pompey, uh, Pompeius Mar Magnus, I'm pretty sure is his Latin name. Um, but we also then have uh, Antony uh, Rome uh, attacking. We also have a Rome from Empire Divided, and we have Gallic Rome from Empire Divided as well. Gallic Rome, obviously, being probably the strongest, I'd say. They got some really nasty swords, and uh, well, yeah, that, and some pretty good missiles as well to go along with that. I mean, normal Rome as well from Empire Divided, another very strong one. We'll have to see whether they can get through these Imperator Augustus legions. But if you've been enjoying the content at the moment and would like to see more Rome 2 action on the channel, do remember to leave a like, subscribe if you're new around here, and a comment to show your support as we build towards uh, 1700, uh, 1700 subs. We're nearly there, guys. Keep it up. And then we'll carry on. I'm sure we can get on to a 2000, magical 2000 at some point. I'd be can't thank you guys enough for the support at the moment. But anyway, as uh, we're now can get over that and we can get into the main battle. And as you can see, a bombardment coming in straight away from the Gallic Rome Ballista, taking out some veteran legionnaires and uh, also some more, well, a lot more veteran legionnaires. I do like how. Uh, they keep like all the colours the same, so, like for instance, like veteran legionnaires for uh, Augustus's Rome or uh, Octavian's Rome at the time goes on to become Augustus is red, and then you've got like Pompey's being blue wherever they are. They've got mercenary hot plates, and they've got like white for uh, Antony. But apart from Praetorian Guard, which is still in red and red and purple, which is kind of annoying. I would like to have seen them in like why couldn't they make them in white? But, like the Centurion has a white shield. Why not everyone else? That'd been really cool. But yeah, so it looks like. They're taking their time with the attackers. They're not eager to get off the wall and start an assault just yet. Kind of just gathering at the bottom. I mean, you can see here lots of legionnaires already gathering up. Taking fire from archers up on this wall here. We've got some longbow hunters. They've got a pretty good angle. They definitely should be firing up onto the wall over there. Uh, taking out as many of these guys as possible. They shouldn't be firing down here. They should fire up onto this wall. There's a lot of guys uh, leaving themselves open to being shot. But they're taking the towers and they're slowly uh, picking off men. As you can see here, these longbow hunters are... Uh, Pretty poorly armored, so I think any time they get hit by a tower, that's basically a man dying, which is just insane. Um, but yeah, so it looks like Rome, well, all the Roman armies just quite happy to sit where they are. And you see they're going to use their javis to full effect first. Going to kill as many of these legionnaire cohorts as possible. But there you go. They're off the walls over here. And this could be the first bit of combat. So it's going to be a legionary cohort against what well, looks like an Evercati cohort of normal Rome. Well, not normal Rome, but Empire Divided Rome. So it's the early versus the late ro empire, really. I do like this officer's mask. That is insanely cool. Gallic Rome now up here as well. He's got some spears coming off. What spear unit is that? It's a very light spear unit. It's just Vigilates. Wow. Which is probably there to cover the costs, bring a full stack. Who knows? But then we've got Longsword Cohort. You can spam out long Longsword Cohort as Gallic Rome. And they're a really, really strong Roman uh, unit to bring. And he looks like he's just going to flank around as much as possible. As you can see here, he's going to try and combat. He looks like he's going to be facing down Anthony's Rome. He's going to be combating uh, as much of it as in many fronts as possible. But this is a stern defense. There's a Vigilay's here. They've got, I mean, I say it's a stern defense. I don't know, look at what it is. It's Vigilay's and Plebs. Uh, it's not really. Um, but they've got plenty of reserves here of Legionnaires and of Praetorians. I presume he's brought, he's brought Armored Legionnaires. So I wonder whether he's brought all these cheap units kind of to finance his uh, expensive taste. That he has going on here. We've got first cohort. We have a lot of first cohort and Evercati. Yeah, so they're definitely like these cheap units here are just to finance this expensive taste by Antony's Rome that's defending. But it looks like they're going to focus down with auxiliary Syrian archers, these units. And I mean, they're taking down some longsword cohort. They might be better waiting to shoot them in the back when they uh, combat these vigilates. It certainly would be uh, more effective. There you go. It looks like uh, Gallic Rome is also engaging over here against Octavian's Rome. Oh, that poor legionnaire losing his head. 
But yeah, it would have been interesting to see who would win this. I imagine, I don't know, like, late Roman Empire, like, they've got like, heavier cavalry and they've got, like, heavier infantry and stuff. But they haven't got, like, the classic legionnaires of, like, the early and high imperial empire. So I don't know who would win. Because, I mean, it's not like the uh, Romans couldn't call on some really good cavalry of their own. They, could, they had, uh, obviously, that Praetorian cavalry and uh, all the auxiliary cavalry as well from various parts of the empire. So they probably could do a good amount of damage to all, like, the cataphracts they could bring. But there is cataphracts that the Romans uh, have at their disposal at, like, the high empire. Let me know in the comments. Who do you, would you rather, like, who do you think would win? The high empire, like, early high empire or the late empire? Um, I don't know really, but I mean you can see here Vigilay's losing. I mean they are killing these cohort uh, Off as well, so I mean I guess we'll find out uh, you can sit, let me know in the comments But also who do you th uh, we'll find out in this battle really probably who will win will it be high or late Roman Empire And they're already battering through look at that that unit I think that's kind of a push because that unit's still holding that is almost certainly a push through there by the uh, Roman player He's pushed through this legionary cohort unit, and he's got him behind, and uh, that's uh, that's a no-no. I hate when people push through; it really, really does frustrate me. And uh, but they're already having sending in Praetorian guard to hold this area over here. They've already got like veteran legionnaires. Looks like uh, Rome here is not doing so well. Pompey's Rome might need to start setting stuff up because he's uh, kind of not engaged at the moment. I mean, he's thrown a lot of jabbies here, a lot of veteran legionnaires going in against one unit of Evocati. This seems a bit excessive, but I mean, if they can route the unit quickly with a few losses, big win for them. Now we're going to see what the blue Ro blue Romans are doing. We have red Romans, white Romans, green Romans, blue Romans. It's like jelly babies almost. And if you don't know what a jelly baby is, it's a type of sweet. But uh, I don't know why I thought that. I don't know why I thought that comparison, jelly babies... And Romans, different coloured Romans, but I guess I did get different coloured jelly babies, I guess. But uh, anyway, less of the r ranting about random crazy stuff, and more back to the battle. And it looks like, uh, well, it already looks like like Augustus's Romans already committed everything. I'm probably going to interchange for calling it Octavian and Augustus, but they're the same guy. We know if you if you know what you're on about with your history and your Romans, you know that they're the same guy, and you won't mind. But yes, yeah, so Augustus Octavian. Octavian's his old name and he becomes the first Roman Emperor, he changes his name to Augustus, or he doesn't call himself the em uh, Emperor, but he basically was. But he looks overstretched already, does uh, this Rome, and uh, he could be in a bit of trouble. He's got very few reserves left, Pompey might need to come over and support. Pompey and Augustus, or Octavian supporting each other, sounds so alien. But this battle was sent in by a member of the Discord as well, I thought I'd just add. Um, and if you haven't already and you'd like to uh, get involved in some battles on the, for the channel or just like just to meet some other guys to play some online battles with, then do join my Discord. It's down below in the link, uh, a link in the description. And uh, yeah, we're always wanting new uh, people to come and like play with. And obviously, it's always great to have uh, a great Rome 2 uh, or just Total War uh, community on the discord and uh, Always welcome to you guys like I said so always great to see some of you new subs there And here we go. So it looks like Pompey's now engaging. He's got mercenary hoplites here. He's gone with a very like almost Hellenic army. He's not really bringing um, Many Romans. Well, he's bringing quite a few but not as many as like some of the other factions We've got Legatus here already pushing for the uh, main cap point and there's uh, a lot of archers here that are available to be t taken out These Praetorian cav might want to do the same and get around like the legs, but they're not. They're just going to go straight through, which is a huge mistake. There's like, these archers are for the killing down here, and this legacy might have to go alone. But these archers will start focusing these legacies down. He's a heavy command, and he's going to try and go down these back streets here and surround this defense here. They might need to send in these reserves, the generals' reserves and these veteran legionnaires, because they're going to try and surround everything here. Possibly, or is he going to just wind his way around here? What a weird way to go, but these archers need to start firing. Oh, these are jabbies. Oh, these are going to be devastating for the uh, legs, as you do imagine. Keep throwing them. Throw more jabbies. You're going to need to get this leg, this is such an easy kill. To, they're just throwing this general in early. Very, very uh, big mistake here by the Antonine. Uh, 
general. And he's down on 24 men. He's behind enemy lines now. They need to keep him trapped here. They've got any cavalry of their own, the defenders. Apart from Lakers, this is no. Um, but they could probably take him out now. Yeah, I mean, they stopped. He's... This is a huge mistake here by... And then another jabby throw. Oh, jeez, that leg has just got rinsed. Oh, my gosh. And the leg is somehow still alive. He's there in the gold armor. And he's going to go into combat. And he's going to rout. He's going to rout. And there he is in combat. Oh, and he's just filled with jabbies. And there he goes. He's down. And they've killed the Antoni Antony's general already. A huge, huge loss. The enemy general. Yeah, general dead. That is a huge mistake. Why he didn't send in the Praetorian Cavs to go and do the, exactly the same job? He could have just done that and kept his legs safe. But yeah, never send your general in that early. Like, I mean, I think with enough per persistence, they could have broken most of uh, like Octavian's roam really early on. But you can see here Pompey is now taking over this choke point here and is uh, winning the day with his veteran legionnaires against the Avakai cohort. He's going to take the day because, of, well, they got a morale debuff as well now with their general dead. So... That's a huge, huge uh, mistake there by the attackers early on, and it's going to give them the uh, give the defenders the advantage. However, the attackers still do have two late empire armies, which are very, very strong. And you can see here they're pushing back these Praetorian guards like they're nothing to them. These units from like Imperator Augustus are basically they they don't really have any new unique units. They are basically just uh well they are oh my gosh i didn't even realize that octavian's rome general's like gone he's dead as well that was a huge what is happening here like people are just throwing away their generals like they mean nothing but um yeah these units are basically the same as the uh, vanilla like grand campaign so these last uh, these late roman empires should probably just chew through them and i mean they are seeming to gallic rome here has got through this choke point here but this is a very good place to hold. They should hold here, really. They need to fall back here with Octavian's Rome. Fall back with Pompey's Rome to this choke point here. And they can maintain less because they're getting chased down. They are in serious trouble. But, uh, yeah, this Gallic Rome, like, unit is getting... I mean, these units are getting, like, chewed up here. Just as they get shot at by, like, every unit of, like, these Soros Spears here are just throwing their Javis down. And like every few seconds, a couple more uh, longsword cohort are dropping. Look at they—they got so many javis in their shields and like in their bodies. How how would you carry on walking with a javi just sticking out of it? You? you just wouldn't. But yeah, these longsword cohort—they're going to try and uh, get through. I mean, they—I don't think they're going to. There's guy legionnaires in here as well. They're a lot more healthy actually. I like their overshields. I do like the oval shield like for the Romans. I think it looks very nice. I like the square shield as well. But I think... I don't know what it is about the Oval Shield. I do like the late Roman Empire units a lot. I do have... I would say I probably, like, enjoy li the late Roman Empire, like, history more than I... Like, the Republican stuff. Which, uh, I'm sure some people see as, like, sacrilege. Because, like, the Republican scene is, like, the most pure Rome or whatever. We've got scythe chariots in here. Or armored chariots. But, uh, yeah, they're just battering through Praetorians. Now that's going to be an easy way to break through. They need to set up infantry to support this. Because then they can take advantage. Because these guys will otherwise just get cut off and killed. I and mean, they're going for these archers. Which is not a bad unit to go for. They've got javis for their uh, armor chariots. Which are scythed. I'd, and now they're just getting absolute loads of kills. I'm sure they've got like over 100 now. 140 yet yeah, going up as we speak. 150. And they're going into like... I think they're going to go into the back lines over here. Which is a good idea. Take out these uh, mercenary hoplites. And having to scramble a unit of gladiator spearmen to come and uh, try and stop these guys. But they're sending in more and more Praetorians just trying to slow them down. What a mess. Gla this is what I mean. Gallic Rome has so much variety in his uh, in his roster. He can just bring like chariots if he like struggles. He can bring really good legionnaires, good cav. And there you go. They're just going to go through them like those Gallic hunters like they meant nothing. They're running down some of their own kinsmen. And these are... Uh, Gladiators really need to go in combat, but they're going to go to the back of all these uh, hoplites here. And this is such a good defense by the uh, hoplites here. They were never going to break through this in time, but it could, could get undone by these uh, armored chariots. They're going to just punch through here, and chariots can punch through. It's one of the few units I could say should be able to pull through, along with elephants. Like, in my opinion, like, these guys can just... I mean, they don't even need to pull through. They just knock everything over anyway. They need to kill some more of these guys, give the attack, and they're just charging into the... 
gladiators now as well. It's hard to keep up with these guys. They're really running around. And these gladiators just could have gotten some kills. And they've lost like 30 men for it. And there you go. These mercenary hot plates are wavering. They might need to send the gladiators in, in the front line. But yeah, those chariots, I'm sure, have got up to 200 kills now. 378. Jeez. He's just taken out hundreds and hundreds of defenders. Such a good win for the uh, attackers here. And there you go. A good jabby uh, volley has just routed uh, this unit, or is wavering this unit. And they've killed a lot in there. They killed about another four or five. And that's what they needed to do. They just needed to get a good jabby line ready and jabby these guys to death. Like Pompey's uh, jabbies that he's called in the cat point might have been really good. I don't know why Pompey's not pushed now. He should push over here. Surround these guys and uh, then retake this sort of uh, choke point here and then he can really force uh, the Antonine Rome to sort of like face him down. But I mean it's normal Rome and sort of Gallic Rome left. The Gallic Rome already looks pretty spent. Wow, he actually is. He's pretty spent. He's not got much infantry left. He's got his Gallic Legionnaires here and he's got his longsword cohort there and he's pretty beaten up. I mean, it's going to be normal Rome then it's going to have to take the day. He's got basically an intact army. In, uh, Augustus' Rome is off the battlefield. He's gone. I'm pretty sure I can't see a single unit of his left. Pompey and uh, Antony's, like, the defending Antony, have got some pretty good uh, healthy units left. And they should be okay. This is a really quick ba uh, pace battle. And if you hadn't realized we're on Carthage, um, so... It's very strange to see like six Roman armies defending Carthage. They're an arch rival and they're just like, yeah, we'll defend this to the death. I'm like, what? What are you doing here? But, um, yeah, so I mean, you can see here, like, the final dregs of these longsword cohort holding on against Praetorians. And I mean, I see a lot of people complaining that, like, uh, Gallic Rome is pretty OP. But I mean, they've done a good job here in, like, nullifying him. They've nearly killed him off. I mean, he has killed a lot of Antonine Rome and he's uh, helped kill off Octavian Rome. But, I mean, they've done a good defense, a stern defense. And they've uh, beaten him back. And I'd say they've taken reasonable losses. Not anything too drastic, but not anything, like, really good. It's just normal Rome now that's going to be the uh, the issue. And he's got basically the similar sort of unit. He's got a lot of Evercarty will have brought. He's got pikes, which uh, they have no answer to, do the defenders. Yeah, they just spammed Avakati. Which is not a bad idea. It's a very it's I think it's a cheaper unit in this time in like the late period than it is like high period. And it's better. And yeah, they brought a lot of cav, which I think is a bit dubious by Gallic Rome. He didn't use that great effect. He could have sent that round to help Antony in his area. But yeah, you can see here some plebs just getting sent in, or Bale Eric Slingers. Are these oh no, they are plebs. Wow. Poor plebs just got sent in to slow that charge down. But I mean they'll then have to charge into Blumin. Uh, Evercarty cohort and Praetorians. These guys are just like this is a thick, thick line, thick with three C's. You can see in the distance over there. Yeah, that cavalry's not not fancying that charge, and it's no surprise. They're kind of all they have to do now is hold these two points here. Pompey just has to now put a load of troops into defending here. He could just come and defend this choke point here. I mean, just kind of leave this area undefended, but then you can defend this area. I mean, it's just stretches uh, normal Rome. And he, or they could just do a general retreat, call a general retreat. I think it might be a better idea. Get Anthony's final units out of here. But it's certainly close. It's certainly close. Rome is certainly steamrolling. If you take out all these Pompey units here, then uh, they're looking really good. They might have to just turn and face somewhere. Here we go, the persistence going on down here. Evercarty fighting veteran legionnaires. You can see the blue Romans fighting out again. Old versus new. I guess, well, they're both old now in present day, but like, this is the old empire and this is the new empire at like the time. And that Praetorian cab is still holding. I don't know if that's like been cycle charging or what, but that is a solid, solid unit that's been holding for a long time. A long time against spears as well. But they could flank now. They could certainly, if uh, normal Rome, I keep calling him normal Rome, but there's all Aurelian's Rome, uh, really put pu like pushes up here hard, which he looks like he might do. These uh, Pompey troops might want to then 
push around here and uh, try and take him in the try and take the rear of uh, Aure Aurelian's Rome out. They can certainly do it. They've got pikes, Evercai here, more pikes. They've got plenty of archers as well, but it looks like Aurelian is dedicating more and more stuff over here. More weakened units. Got a few like Evercai who are pretty beaten up going that way. And the, I mean, Aurelian's here. Is he actually? It might. Well, it's not Aurelian himself, but it's like the cataphract unit. Actually, well, no, it's not. It's not already. I thought it was, but it's not the sun god himself. Um, but it's certainly within archer range. If they have any archers left, they definitely want to use that. But I think most of them are spent. They're all dead over here for uh, Anthony. Has he got any bows out? Nope. Swords out and swords out for the Cretans. They have some of the best. Like, Anthony just realized there's some of the best like archers in the game. He's Cretan and Syrian in his roster. That's insanely good. There you go, they've beaten another Roman unit here. All these veteran legionnaires have been here since the beginning, I think. And they've just been blobbing and taking out one unit at a time. I mean, they could certainly have been flanking a bit more, which would have routed them quicker. But, yeah, they need to send like more units this way. They keep dedicating one unit at a time to the Romans. Or, like, the attacking Romans. But this is a concern. It's now a clear route to surrounding Antony's Rome. Antony's Rome needs to get stuff out of here. Like, just leave a unit or so to hold back the cavalry. But yeah, I think Gallic Rome's realized what normal Rome's trying to do. And he's now going to just keep his cavalry near. Engage, possibly. Keep these guys pinned down so it gives time for normal Rome to go in. And Antony's Rome sends in more troops, which is a mistake, really. You should just try and get as many of these guys out of here. Get as many out and then survive to li uh, live to fight another day, really, because... It is not long until the floodgates can open. These uh, hot plates are not going to hold forever. And they're getting flanked anyways to speak. The general really should go in here. Anthony's general should just go in and ride down this uh, Syrian. It's so, like, on its own here. But is he... Uh, they're going to go for a cheeky snipe? Maybe he doesn't want to charge him because it's another Anthony of Rome. That may be the case, no. <laughs> it's no mercy. It doesn't matter if you're the same faction. They would run you down if he was paying attention. But I don't think he is. But it's a fairly stern defense over here from Pompey's Rome. And he's got all these that could turn around if they need to. But, I mean, they're starting to die. Oh, there's a lot. Yeah, you can see here. I mean, this is a, there was four units here. They can always do this flanking themselves. But all it takes is a few weakened Evocati to flank around. And these guys are starting to waver and lose. If they did that themselves, they could have, A, saved lives in earlier like fights further back down this street when they've been fighting or they could have uh, routed all these themselves they had four units to one at one point and then smaller uh, smaller units got sent in to support and they've got to this stage that they're being flanked and this like whole area over here is going to get lost veteran legionnaires dropping quickly they're now firing into the back of them as well with uh, what are these guys armored archers some good archers here I don't think like this Roman army has used much of its ammo up I don't think he's even engaged much, to be honest. He, like, fought a bit over here at the gate, but not much. And there you go, Alex uh, not Alexander. Alexander's Rome is very overpowered. Anthony's Rome is, uh, well, pushing forward. And there's Gallic Rome's pulled through there, um, which is not good at all. And th now they're going after the general there. I mean, uh, they kind of pulled through here as well, have um, the Romans, but... These units had basically just routed. They weren't going to stand. So they're now going to get surrounded and this legacy is gone. And yeah, Gallic Rome pulled through to get here because there's no way he pulled through all of these legionnaires here. But they're going to trade generals. Gallic Rome's going to lose his and Anthony, Anthony's Rome's going to lose uh, his. And it's a more of a loss for the defenders than the attackers. Like, Gallic Rome's spent. And he might stand for a while, might this general. Um, while... Uh, well, yeah, actually he might, yeah, because they could just hammer an anvil here. And they might rile, rile, uh, route all these guys. Jeez. Words are hard. Um, but yeah, so they can't. They might not necessarily kill this general before they all rout because they've already lost theirs. They'll have the morale uh, damage. And here you go, here's a charge. Oh, jeez. Those Praetorians were hammered. And then there's going to be another charge here. Another Gallic Roman cavalry unit coming in. More equites. And not as effective. Oh, I mean, there was effective. But, I mean, in other places, not so. But yeah, these Praetorians probably are losing now. Yeah, they're losing decisively. And just like that, look at that. 
this was a pretty like dangerous flank and force over here. And it's gone. It's basically gone. I mean, these Gallic Legionnaires might die. Or Gallic Imperial Bodyguard, I should say. But uh, all of these troops are going to die. They could have got back to the final defense to help with Pompey. Which Pompey greatly needs them now. It is looking pretty dire for this Rome. But we'll have to see what happens here. But I, I would say that the defenders are probably not going to get this. Because look at the balance of power. That is uh, pretty dire for the defenders. They... I mean, they need to do something major now. They need to beat all of this. Kill, uh, like, Aurelian's Rome off soon. But, I mean, they're just getting cut, cycle charged by everything. I'm sure there's going to be another charge. I mean, they've got cataphracts. That's the thing. These cataphracts are so nasty. It's the one thing I think that the legions of, like, the late legions have. They're off with just cataphracts. Yeah, and there you go. These guys are uh, probably routed. I think that's all the Praetorian Guards gone there. This was just like phase through a tower. Yeah, Evakai cohort gone. Praetorians all gone. These Equites might fall, but I mean the general is still alive. There's 32 of them left, and that's a solid unit. Not in numbers, but it's like these Imperial Bodyguard are pretty solid. They don't die easily unless surrounded. And there you go. This is all, uh, well, not all. There is more over here, actually. But Rome is uh, getting ready for the final assault on Pompey's Rome. And we'll have to see what happens. I mean, these Peltas, they've still got some Javis, luckily. But they've got, like, thorough spears, which aren't going to hold the line for long. And they've got one unit of Legionnaires left. They spent a lot of their Legionnaires early on. But, I mean, I thought Pompey did quite well in holding back. I mean, he beat Antony's Rome quite easily. Then he beat, uh, well, the bits of... Uh, like normal Rome that you face, or Aurelian's Rome, until uh, this bit happened. But he's done okay. I think Octavian's Rome getting like annihilated early on was not great for the defenders at all. I don't know what happened there. But we'll just fast forward a little bit while they uh, prepare for the final assault. It looks like they're going to come through the street here. I don't know why. You should just defend the the final spot. You can't defend all the choke points here. There's so many. Like, this is the thing. Carthage is great to defend. Um, like, you can hold up the walls and then behind the walls and then, uh, like, in the streets, like, over here. But as soon as you get, like, to this cliff area, it's pretty hard to hold. Unless you've got considerable amount of reserves left. Which, I mean, Pompey does not. <laughs> Pompey really does not have considerable reserves. It has, like, seven units. And his general and his uh, legionnaires are all funneled into this one choke point here. Which is now leaving them very, very vulnerable to being surrounded. These Evakai, they're breaking or are they running, falling back? No, they broke that Evakai. Wow, that was impressive. And they're now getting sh like shot to pieces by armored archers. They're going to carry on. Like wild madmen, but I respect it. They're going to die with honor. They're going to charge in. It's the true Roman way. You don't retreat. They're going to charge in. Try and cut down these archers. They're going to get faced down by some more Evercati. Endless seas of Evercati here from Aurelian's Rome. You can just see there the blue and the red mixed together. You can see the sides. It's very easy to be able to tell in this battle who's who. Sometimes when you see Romans facing each other, you're just like, well, it's just red versus red. You can see blue versus red in here. The lines are kind of intermingling. I definitely think the Evercati have pulled through here. What is going on? Well, like, I, that does not usually happen unless, like, a pull-through happens. We've got pikes in here as well. Yeah, you see this, like, sort of push back here of units. That usually doesn't happen. Unless something dubious has happened. The pikes here, they're arriving, and now the, uh, well, Pompey's Rome is falling back. He doesn't like that. And he's going to force his way up here, but he's now leaving his cho his, uh, cap point just completely undefended. That's a very, uh... A uh, beginner move. You shouldn't really have done that. I don't think that's a bit uh, like a bit of a mistake there. To be honest, he's also just left his rear open. I mean, but it was a very much a futile defense here. He may as well take the offensive and try and kill as many as possible. But I mean, his units are routing, just getting javied to death. You better just to stand your ground and retreat when you're getting javied. I mean, Zoros might actually. Uh, oh no, they're losing decisively. I think they. Were, I thought they were going to catch up these pikes. As they came around the corner, but no. 
I think they're everything's just routing because the defenders' morale is low and whatever. The general's still alive, but uh, for how long, who knows? They're about to take the capture point as well, and that is going to be the end of the battle. The attackers are going to take the city of Carthage. Only one Rome survives, and it is Aurelian's Rome. Kind of like in history, then. Aurelian's Rome prevailed over everything else, including, well, in this scenario, including ones from hundreds of years ago. <laughs> um, but yeah, so um, this one was sent in by uh, Anzac Warspite here, who was playing as Pompey's Rome. Um, so well done to him for, uh, well, making a final last gallant stand, but it was not quite enough. And uh, thank you for him for sending it in. Um, his general giving 53 kills. I think the best of his veteran legionnaires was 155. No, 161 is another one. Uh, his me mercenary veteran hot plates getting 125 and 65. Um, maybe I would have brought more legionnaires. Maybe brought like legionary cohort instead of hot plates. Maybe a better idea. Uh, especially with the throw of spears. These guys are just no match to the legions. Um, and then his... Uh, uh, Peltas got 104 kills and his gladiators just got 30 kills. They're good, but only for flanking, and he just kind of let them get run over by cavalry. And he, uh, by cataphract. Chariots. We got there eventually. Went through cavalry, cataphracts, then to chariots. But uh, he also ranked them up very high, which uh, might not have wanted to do. You might want to do, like, put them around your legions and stuff like that. Um, but we'll have a look at um, Bao Li Roy, um, who was playing as Antony's Rome. He, I think he made a mistake of not uh, of taking the offensive at the end there. He should have fallen back with uh, Pompey's Rome to the final cap point and uh, try and defend that. But obviously he uh, thought he could take out Gallic Rome's general, which he couldn't quite do. Um, but his auxiliary Cretan Arch got 121 kills. His Syrians got 119. His best armored legionnaire got 137. One got nine. It's a real, real shame. Uh, and then one of his, uh, his only ever cards, he got 95. His first cohort getting only 56 kills. Wow, what happened? He, he's brought so many expensive units and they should have got more kills for sure. His Praetorians only get 128, which is pretty poor for Praetor Praetorians. And his plebs and vigilates obviously just getting annihilated. Um, and then Shockhawk, who got taken out first as Octavian's Rome, had a really rough time. He's fighting on a lot of fronts. Uh, yeah, his uh, Eagle cohort getting 108 kills. His uh, Legionnaires getting 137. And um, his Legionary cohort, I think the best one getting... Only 61 kills is really, really amazing. Like These units are like, so elite in other games, it's got all wiped out. His Praetorian's got 144 and 139, and his Veteran Legionnaire is getting 113. And then we have uh, the Dominican player 55, who's playing as the normal Rome, or Aurelian's Rome. Uh, 229 kills um, with his Cataphracts, 105 with his Armored Archers. His Evercarty, as you can see, he just spams it out. It's just what you do as normal Rome. Uh, got 130 kills, I think the best one. 140 there. His Pike's getting 53 kills, never really having to do much combat. And then Cow Slayer, who was playing as the other Antony's Rome, the attacking one. Um, he sent his general in wildly, which is an interesting decision. His uh, Praetorians also just kind of like got left in combat, get, only getting 5 kills. Um, his Evercarty, I think the best one getting 117. And his uh, Veteran Legionnaire is the best one getting 96. And then I lost my Cactus, who's playing as Gallic Rome. Getting insane kills with his general, 237. His uh, armor chariot's even doing even better, nearly getting 500 kills. Um, and his uh, cavalry did okay at the end there, getting 98 kills, charging to the rear. His slinger's getting 104 kills, and his Gallic legionnaire's getting 124. His longsword cohort are really, like I said, really, really good unit. Getting 222, another one getting 217, and another one getting 210. So they're really, really good. But yeah, guys, I hope you enjoyed this clash of Roman empires. If you did, then please remember to leave a like, subscribe if you're new around here, and leave a comment to show your support. And until next time, Legionnaires, bye for now.